What's going on people, welcome back to my personal channel, welcome back to another Transfer Daily video for you guys today. In this video we're going to be talking about Sergio Regulon and new interest from Napoli who are now interested in his signature. We're also going to be talking about Bakayoko and a potential return back to Italy for him. We're also going to round this off with a talk about Ethan Ampadu and potential interest from Fulham and Norwich who want to take him on loan for a season. But before I start this video, I just want to say, smash that like button if you haven't done so already. I'm trying to hit 1,000 likes. It's the first time where I'm trying to go for an aim. So guys, if you're watching this, smash that like button. Press that subscribe button as well to see more content from me. And also hit that bell notification button to be the first guy to know whenever any new content comes on this channel. Now, we'll start with news that we've been anticipating for months and has now just been officially confirmed. William and Pedro have officially announced their Chelsea departures. Both of them have posted goodbye letters on their social media accounts. I'll have them running through on the side of this channel as well. And it's news that we've expected and it does feel like the end of an era in a way. In just over a year we've lost Eden Hazard, we've lost Pedro, we've lost Willian. From that 2016-17 winning side I think there's only like two or three, four players left. I can name Kante and Asfi as the only two main stars that are still there. Marcus Alonso as well. Mishi Batshuayi is probably going to be on his way out in Barda. I don't think there's anyone else that's still in this that is still in this lineup. And it does feel like the end of an era, but we did make a big step back after 16-17 with that horrendous transfer window. Sorry, I do have to change this. Yeah, after that horrendous transfer window, we took many steps back, and it does feel like a bit of a positive. This is the best move for all three parties for Pedro. He has looked like he's on the decline for a good couple seasons now. It's been a steady decline, but he's still been a very hard-working player, so he's been appreciated regardless. And as respected having less game time as well he hasn't been at the top of the pecking order especially this season I think he's been our fourth choice winger this season if I'm being honest and even with that he's still just been hard work and he hasn't really created much fuss about it he created a lot less fuss than William did in the Conte stuff but I'm going to go into that later as well Pedro's been a very hard worker and both of them have been very hard working servants for the club and both leave the club with a lot of amazing memories for the fans William he had the double over Spurs both away this season and at Wembley. He won player of the season in the 15-16 season and he saw a huge development of his play in that season as well. Can't forget the Barcelona home game where he smacked them up so bad they tried to put a 55 million bid on him in the summer and tried to throw Arter in the deal as well. Everton at home in the 14-15 season as well, a very key goal in the tight match which went a long way to deciding the Premier League title that season. And of course the end of the 19-20 season where to be honest he has been brilliant. He He's had a lot of, I will say, a couple stat padding with a couple penalties and set pieces. But his tracking back, his chance creation, he's been very involved in play and his ball carrying has been excellent post lockdown. And it might have been him trying to persuade Lampard and the club to give him the three year contract that he was pushing for. But regardless, this does feel like the best situation for both clubs. Pedro's had his good memories for the club as well. You got to, you got to remember 16-17 where he was so clinical and he was just excellent throughout the entire season. And he was part of that brilliant upfront partnership with Diego Costa and Eden has to do with just running riot throughout most of the 16-17 season. He got key goals against Spurs and Everton in that season as well. Can't forget the amazing strike against Watford in the 17-18 season. The Leicester away win in the FA Cup 17-18 on the way to the FA Cup victory that season as well. And also you can't forget the Europa League final goal against Arsenal. The second goal where if you guys remember those vlogs it went crazy in McGettigan's after that. Now both of those players have been hard working service for us but like I said this is the best move for both clubs. Pedro will be headed to Roma. I'm not sure how much that final injury to him in the FA Cup final would have would have ruined that deal but I think it's more or less been confirmed by now so it's nothing too deep. Willian on the other hand Fabrizio Romano has confirmed that Willian to Arsenal should be confirmed within the next week or if anything it should be confirmed by the start of this week. I'm hearing it's just little agreements that are just that are all the difference in this deal but most of the terms and conditions have been agreed between Willian and Arsenal. We know it's going to be a three year deal with an option to, with an option to extend that for one more year. It's going to be a bit of a drop in weight compared to the ones Chelsea were giving him but that was going to be expected because here's the thing we know he's probably gonna have one good season for us 
Arsenal, but by the time he is 35, he's going to be a completely different player to the William we saw at 32. It's the worst kept secret in football at this point. We know William's going to Arsenal. We know Pedro's going to Roma. No one's going to hold any ill feeling against William going to Arsenal. We know what it is. Arsenal players move to Chelsea in their prime to success. Chelsea players move to Arsenal just to stay in London because they're cosy and they're comfortable. And we know William's comfortable here. He's built a life and he's built a career with his family. He's also got a restaurant with David Luiz, who is also at Arsenal. So we kind of knew that this deal was going to happen. So, William, best of luck. Pedro, best of luck. Thanks for all the memories. It's been a great seven years for William. I think for Pedro, it's been a great four years as well. Moving on to the next piece of news. Napoli interested in Sergio Regulon. Now, Napoli have inquired Real Madrid about his signature and they joined the race for Regulon. We know Chelsea are still interested in the left back, but we also know the situation with our defenders where we need to sell a left back in order to buy a left back. We need to sell a centre back also in order to buy a centre back. And we know that one of these left backs is going to be leaving and it is probably going to be Emerson, especially after that Bayern Munich game where I think it was really last chance saloon for him to make an actual stake for his spot. And I thought he was decent on the ball. He didn't have the worst performance on the field, but same way he was getting dominated defensively. And towards the end of the game, I think he just give, he just gave up. And he was really left out to drive for the fourth goal, but the third goal he really should have marked to Lisa better and he should have noticed that run a lot earlier. Now, Emerson hasn't really been that impressive other than the start of this season. So it makes more sense that he's the player that needs to go. And I think for Alonso, he has his limitations, but he's also very useful as a squad player. He allows you to switch formation. He, he allows you to make an attacking substitution. And he also adds depth without moaning too much about the minutes. And Alonso, you haven't really heard much complaints about him throughout his time at Chelsea. And I also kind of think of Alonso, it's the case of... This is as best as he's going to get. I would be very surprised if a better club came in for Marcus Alonso. I don't even think I recognise a better club coming in for him in the start. So if there is one, let me know down in the comments. But with Alonso, I think he'll just be happy with his place at Chelsea. It's a big club. It's a club that's always going to be fine for trophies. And he's always going to be getting some sort of game time. And compared to the teams he was playing at before then, this has been a huge step up for him. So I think for him, he'll just be comfortable. So Emerson over Alonso, I'd say just keep Alonso because tactically allows you to protect become more flexible. Moving on to the next bit of news, Bakayoko potentially going back to AC Milan. Now AC Milan are, re are reinterested in signing Bakayoko back from Chelsea and Chelsea are willing to sell for 20 million but AC Milan want 15 million and with Bakayoko I really think we should just try and get wherever we want from him because the way his stock dropped when he was at Chelsea it doesn't, it, we know back here at Chelsea is never going to happen. That was, I will say straight up, possibly the worst player I've seen in a Chelsea shirt live. And I think when he went back to AC Milan, it worked perfectly for him. And he wants to now halve his weight just to really try and push this move forward. And personally, I think it's good for him because it's a league that suits him well. It's a league that he was very confident in. The fans loved him in AC Milan. I think he was one of the few players that they actually regularly made chance for. And it's the connection that he had with the fans gave him the confidence that, to be honest, he really needed after that Chelsea spell. You saw Watford away. You saw when Bakayoko was getting sent off and he tried to applaud the fans and the fans were just chanting your fucking shit at him. Bakayoko's um, stock with the Chelsea fans just completely dropped to an absolute low. And it's to the point where I don't think anyone actually wants to see him in a Chelsea shirt again. So this is another one where it's best for both parties to just get rid we both want to just act like this deal just never really happened. If he goes back to AC Milan, it's what's best for him. He's, it's the only place where he's looked completely comfortable in that in his first spell at Monaco. But I don't think his second spell on loans there has been anything like the first. So, back Yoko to AC Milan. Honestly, just any fee. Just please get it done. Last bit of news. Ethan Ampadu could potentially be going to either Fulham or Norwich on loan. Both of them have, have registered their interest in signing him. And both of them have their pros and cons. Fulham will give him regular Premier League experience. But if Fulham start to struggle, he could potentially be sacrificed if he doesn't hit the ground running. Scott Parker isn't going to try and put too much effort into developing a player that isn't his if the players that are his are struggling and they're again struggling to stay in the Premier League. So it's risky, but it all depends on how Scott Parker initially aims to use Ampadu. So we just need to hear more on that end. Norwich, on the other hand, they won't give him Premier League experience, but they will play good possession-based football and will give him the experience of playing in a team that regularly dominates possession, and that's what Chelsea will be aiming to do as well. So that would give him decent experience. People will say, yeah, the Championship won't give him Premier League experience either, but Tammy didn't need it. 
Mount didn't need it, neither did Tamori. So Ampadu could still shine in the championship and potentially progress to having more minutes at Chelsea. But this is the end of your transfer daily news. Let me know your thoughts on any of the news or any of the comments I've made down in the comment section below. Don't forget to smash that like button. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button as well. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Up the Chelsea.